when you are under stress dear friends we can't learn we can't make decisions we tend to make poor decisions and how do we remove the stressors so we keep bringing those memories up but the meditation is helping us disengage disconnect and then reduce and reduce and drop all those memories and then when they're gone then automatically we bring the health back up that's why people are able to sleep very quickly very better within a few days of meditation practice every day you are going to experience a new change in you you will be loving it you will be loving your life you will be loving your day you will be living every moment of it i have been to meditation from last september i could see a big change in myself before and after meditation it's been more than 4 to 5 months that i've got my headache because of headache i'll not have fun i'll not enjoy every day i used to go to my bed with headache i used to suffer a lot but meditation has changed that and i'm really having no headache at all so that's a big change for me all of a sudden i got a migraine headache and after doing meditation after joining and attending this session and uh, doing meditation and without any medication i healed my migraine for the first time headache is the pain which i always used to take a med- medication for that and this was for the first time where i didn't need any medicine to cure my headache and i'm very happy for this i am doing meditation since uh, 2011 i had severe asthma and my lungs was weak and many of the things i went through before meditation i was not able to walk like um, 10 to 15 minutes i used to get like breathlessness even i could turn um, go on the steps with meditation first thing is i healed myself i i started go for trekking jogging the physical health seems to be happening due to two main things one meditation is helping remove all the stressors from the body and then second a meditative mind is becoming a positive mind or a miraculous mind and as a result it is helping our body to construct repair significantly Good afternoon and a wonderful evening. Meditation for health. Yesterday we sent out the email newsletter of kath kane sir which also sent out in whatsapp groups on integrative medicine because the body is so complex and we understand very little through modern science so the ancient sciences they alternate practices are definitely helping in many ways many of the illnesses look from that angle but since it's all energy science and modern medicine is only dealing with matter and not with energy definitely it cannot solve many as a scientist as a computer scientist i definitely can urge for it when you don't look at energy you only look at only matter chemical reaction is matter and so you're only looking at that but then every cell every atom every micro entity has energy field around it when two atoms come together two molecules come together the energy fields collide first before the physically they collide the energy fields already collide and then they influence each other already the change has occurred chemical reaction is later <coughs> so modern medicine is looking from a chemically how things react things change and hence so it can go and then work on that aspect but before that there is a placebo that is working on it saying that i've taken this medication so it's going to work for me the placebo is the energy that is coming together and then meeting 
ah the nocebo when you say that is it is not going to work for me i am just definitely going to fall further sick so this newsletter contains several several alternate practices which are all energy based depends on they are all sciences they are there absolutely depends on how much believe one would have into anything will give them that much result so with meditation of course called called raja yoga of all yogas is meditation and we are doing anapanasate within meditations seems to be the most easiest so we are onto the most perfect technique to heal ourselves because it's completely working at the energy level and then beyond so we're talking about food choices anyway i want to conclude that and say take time to read that newsletter it educates of the various modalities that are available and then why they are important or how they are working you know there is a nice differentiation that siddha yoga versus ayurveda that explained by <coughs> i think sadguru different masters who practice in different modalities talked about it so it's quite uh, helpful to understand just enough to for us to understand various modalities we should continuously explore if we have a question about another modality we must explore it why not meditation we are doing hey what is that yoga what is this pranayama if we have the doubt perennially then explore it at least know about it then use discrimination to say what is working at what level oh one is working at body how there is at mind oh this is at five levels okay there is a discrimination you can utilize and you don't want to do it is fine then we are be a certain that we have the right level of right process to get us through which is anapanasati but if you have the questions you must explore why not time eternal so much life is there why not this and if you want to try something else so that you know you can convince yourself with your own personal experience this is fun for me do it because we are in jnana yoga and dhyana yoga both we want meditation but definitely want to learn knowledge too that helps us to discriminate we are not doing by blind belief so this week they've been understanding meditation how it can and it is improving dramatically the health of many people physical health start with stress then with energy in the body we recognize is anti aging so we can look for something permanently without worrying about it if i this or not money saved if nagapradeep could save 3000 rupees per month many of us i'm sure can save that or more the cosmic industry is so it's billions and billions and one of the flourishing industries is cosmetics industry cosmetics and supplements two industries are really flourishing with all with the programming the programming that happens in the tv ad as if you don't take it then we are not going to be good looking at all are we not going to be having that confidence are we not going to have that have that's how the programming is done tv programs but the meditative mind will not succumb to these programs and get influenced so we talked about right food habits and then we said meditation is going to optimize the sleep and so there is energy in the body we talked about mental health 
how all those feel good chemicals are automatically making us feel good change of moods the cravings and addictions and if i talked about it so they're also meditation is helping us stay away from the cravings because that craving that happens when we didn't have a certain chemical there is then produced as which is essentially dopamine is quite helping in overcoming cravings the high that people get because they were stressed out the lack of control on life so when we have lack of control on our life and so then we are getting we want to somewhere so stressful of course and we feel frustrated we want to let out our anger vent it out somewhere so we go into addiction of a drug or alcohol because it temporarily makes us uh, forget about it so it utilizes and the moment that effect of uh, alcohol giving that high is gone suddenly there is a crash in our brain for that chemical it is not there so it craves ask for more and it give more again it crashes and ask for more so it is a vicious circle the way to overcome and then people have done this right many of them are overcoming alcohol addictions through regular practice rather than taking up medication or trying tougher things so food craving becomes less and so i want to say that our body will become more and more we become more sensitive because we are developing awareness awareness of everything so first thing is the awareness of the body so when the, when you become aware of the body so naturally you are paying attention and then we are in case we have to eat less we eat less so remember that and then start applying one of the reasons why we can't heal ourselves are initially we heal but then we come back with the health when it comes back or the poor health comes back is because we stop paying attention to things that are coming to us one is paying attention to the body and it says eat less eat stop and do this or do that so pay attention there as opposed to a fixed regime if you don't follow the message they were receive then what our initial benefit we gain through meditation to help us encourage because there is a lot of biological physical change happening they'll happen in the beginning but then in the little longer run we got to pay close attention to all the messages we get it and then start applying them they may appear contrary to what you've been told to do so food pay close attention and then take what is your body is asking you want to break the routine vegetarian food is a must and the second thing sleep also when you when you don't feel sleepy don't have to force yourself to sleep meditators will start developing that energy with less of sleep and so then then you don't force yourself if you suddenly wake up at 1 o'clock or 3 o'clock then rather than forcing yourself to sleep just sit down and then open a book and read night times are great for sadhana practice so rather than forcing ourselves when we are feeling fresh thinking that if i don't sleep now tomorrow my day is going to be spoiled we got to get over that particular very thought and instead utilize you know when i was the initial days are always great days because you keep getting the special messages and afterwards the intelligent process expects that we also become aware so we can follow our awareness and they don't does not necessarily give extra special help of the kind but is to when i was in 2002 i clearly remember the days somebody used to bang my bed from below i thought somebody is actually from the ground floor we live in apartments those days and somebody is actually hitting the slab at 4 o'clock suddenly like there's some banging happening i said what's happening and then i see nobody is there around literally multiple times experience i say hey chandra you get up now you know for you now meditate because i would have set some intention prior night and said i have to get up and meditate today there are no zoom classes then they were more self driven those messages will come they'll that clearly i think it's not just you know feeling something intuition 
is like physical physical sensation that somebody is actually banging the door uh, bed. We can have anything like that too, friends. But we utilize that opportunity to not force ourselves to sleep. We want to break that habit that I must sleep for six or seven, eight hours. Experimentation is the mantra in practice of meditation for every belief. Everything ultimately comes down to a belief, so experimentation, to break it. We want to learn more about this belief reprogramming next week when we're getting into the manifestation. That's very important. It comes to the food habits and it comes to the sleep habits. Belief reprogramming, breaking the beliefs, experiment. So let's go into this meditation once again. Today, we'll understand how meditation increase our mind powers, IQ, intelligence. We are that unlimited intelligence. Pat on your back and say, I am becoming genius-minded. I am becoming genius-minded. Pat on your back. Unless you tell yourself you're not going to become one. It's good. I am genius-minded. That very statement can make wonders to the cells because I say my master is genius-minded, so I have to work like that. So meditation is helping us increase. Uh, mind powers will learn that after meditation, relax yourself. So we'll go into the meditation once again, dear friends. We're practicing Anapanasana meditation, breath mindfulness meditation. Our goal is to be mindful, to be mindful of our normal natural breath. With your eyes closed, specs remote, as you see in the pictures, on the chair, on the floor, in the chair, on the floor. Comfortably sit down with your eyes closed, remove the specs. Fingers into fingers, cross your feet. Just that's the posture. That's it. Be comfortable posture. Take back support required. You need not sit in the middle of the floor somewhere, but take comfortable back support and observe your natural breath in the middle of the eyebrows, right? This this point. Take it as a reference point. See the breath is going in the nose, inside, right? It's going in and coming out at that point. Feel it. Sense it. Now your natural breath going in and coming out. If you're having difficulty sensing that breath is observing the breath there, I want you to make sure you don't observe this skin outside. Instead, you're observing the breath inside, right? You're observing the breath. If there's difficulty observing the breath here, because you can't really feel it, by the time breath goes there, it becomes very, very, very thin, subtle. You can try to observe elsewhere in the nose, where, you know, definitely right at the, uh, at the tip. And you see cold air, warm air coming in and out, or going in, cold air, warm air coming up. You can observe there. Preferably here, because ultimately, as what's happening is when you're observing the breath, of course, thoughts are coming down, and the breath is also becoming shorter and lighter, and it comes shorter. It's somewhere here initially, you're breathing or even below or till the abdomen. But as it becomes shorter, lighter, 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 ultimately, it culminates here. Culminates here. Then we don't find anything at all. And at that point, there are total emptiness. We don't find anything to observe, so we, be, we go into the empty state of mind. When we let go of the breath beyond a point, we have nothing to observe in the empty side. So when you observe the breath, mind becomes empty. As the mind is empty, we start experiencing total emptiness. That's the energy. We feel sensations in the body or mind. Just be a witness to that. But in case you're thinking, if you know that you're thinking in thoughts, bring your attention back to the breath. Thoughts will come, dear friends, always. Do not be harsh on yourself. When you know th thoughts are there, observe your breath again. And then continue to observe it with your eyes closed. Just observing natural breath, no manipulation, no special pranayama. Just observing your natural breath. Relax yourself. This is called anapanasati, breath, breath of mindfulness meditation. We're practicing for maximum time. Before that, we're doing something called heart elevation process, where the crux of the process is to the crux of the process is to elevate yourself with a higher emotion of love, gratitude, compassion. And so just follow my guidance. Relax yourself. I'm playing music. I'm also guiding your job. But Anapanasati is to be observing your natural breath all the time and go into the emptiness.
dear friends dear masters with your eyes closed specs remote keep your hands on your chest area rest your attention on your breath and on your sacred heart take a slow long relaxing breath can you feel your beautiful heart Breathe more of that slow, long, relaxing breath and feel your sacred heart, the seed of all emotions. Which is nurturing all life with its love energy. this gratitude energy I want you to recollect an experience from your life where you felt enormous love joy gratitude appreciation relive that moment and feel that emotion in your body Relive that moment from your life of love, of joy and feel that energy inside your beautiful heart. We are all interconnected deep inside. We are specks of energy, intricately connected with each other in this quantum entanglement. Love is the way, gratitude, compassion are all the ways to experience that oneness again. Feel it, dear friend. And allow yourself to radiate that energy 
beyond your body onto every corner of this planet earth as your attention goes there the energy flows go into breath mindfulness meditation with your fingers into fingers resting your hands comfortably in your lap absolute to a normal natural in breath and the out breath natural normal in breath and the out breath the friends our mind slowly becomes empty
you recognize you are in thought gently go back to observing your breath and allow yourself to slowly and slowly become empty mind is becoming empty we move ourselves into the generous present moment and we merge into this greater emptiness that energy feel we allow our body to function at its natural best develop greater intelligence be with your breath and let yourself to slowly and slowly become empty and let yourself to experience emptiness inside of you all around you
color yourself. To become totally empty of all thoughts in your mind as you merge into your breath. Become a bear. of the emptiness inside of you, all around you. We are less matter, more emptiness and energy. Can you become aware of that emptiness inside of you, all around you? When our mind becomes empty of all thought, we slowly Go away from all things material and experience emptiness around. yourself to experience that emptiness of no body, no thing, spreading far and wide beyond your body, beyond your room, going into the edges of this universe that's energy. This is the quantum energy field of unlimited possibility. All emptiness is energy. The longer you stay connected to this field of energy, To the abundance of this energy field, the more we become of it and receive from it.
you find yourself distracted in thought, gently go back to observing your breath and slowly find that emptiness all around. Tune in to the abundance of healing energy, mystical energy, miraculous energy, love energy, or whatever you can become aware of in this field. This is the field of unlimited. This is the field of unknown. Allow yourself to trust into this unknown. And the longer you stay connected as no body and no thing, the more miraculous your life will be.
go deeper and deeper into yourself, dear friends. Allow yourself to stay connected to this emptiness, the divine self. Friends, let's express gratitude it is an honor and privilege to be exploring consciousness at this time of history to be living this life Express your gratitude to all things and everybody in your life. Your parents, your teachers, your mentors, your family, friends, colleagues, partners, everybody. And your gratitude to this nature, to all the things, technology, places, systems, institutes, and to yourself and to this intelligent universe. Gratitude is the ultimate state of receivership. Relax your body. Feel your body. And let your autonomous nervous system repair your body.
and as you relax, a little bit of experience from the session, your feelings, your visions. And whenever you're ready, you can keep your hands on your eyes for five seconds to circulate that energy back into your body. And then you may open your eyes. Okay, dear friends. Hope you enjoyed the session. Wilma, madam, would you like to share your experience? Well, I'm seeing here Noreen Gandhi. Hi, Noreen. <laughs> Good morning, everyone. Can you hear me? Yes. Can you hear me? Yes. yes. Yeah. Um, Actually, um, I have uh, been meditating since uh, January of this year. Uh, I started on the Ganga program and this is my fourth meditation session. Um, I have uh, experienced uh, from day one, um, good, uh, uh, go a good night's sleep after doing my meditation and a lot of um, benefits from the first program that I uh, embarked on um, but uh, what I noticed best was during this COVID journey that I had uh, last month um, I was um, diagnosed with a COVID pneumonia almost at the end of the abundance program and uh, I came came down with 40% of um, lung damage and uh, I was hospitalized for about 15 days so during that time, I was trying to find some. Um, um, I was trying to find some um, meditation sessions, and uh, I actually wrote to Chandra sir, and uh, he gave me a few links uh, of meditations. And the first one that I tripped on was a long meditation, the one hour twenty minutes one. And in that meditation session, um, I actually saw a vision of. Um, I I am. A, a Catholic, I saw a vision of Jesus Christ all the way from the ground up to the up going up into the sky, and uh, uh, it was a vision of the divine mercy. So you have rays coming out from the heart, um, uh, the red and uh, white rays. So the white rays actually seem like water, like a um, gush of like a river flowing, and it was coming and bathing me. So it was like as if it was cleansing me. And um, in, in that same meditation session, I also um, had, uh, um, since my lungs were so badly damaged, I put all my energies over there. And I actually, in my meditation, I fired up neurons around my lungs and I started feeling good about it. So it was such a different experience because I've only heard it. I've been, and at the 
ironically just before i started uh, before i got the covid pneumonia i was reading you are the placebo and how things can be healed um, by your mind power so i started doing that and i started feeling good um i got out of the hospital my lungs still were uh, having a lot of those pneumonia patches large patches and um, the doctors were um, were kind of uh, concerned so 3 weeks later when i went for a follow up uh, i had to get my chest x ray done and i had to um i i had to go back uh, to the hospital and when the doctor she looked at the chest x ray she was amazed she actually raised her eyebrows and she said that your uh, lung fields are clear i was expecting to see um uh, scarring or maybe fibrosis because of the extent of lung damage but uh, everything is uh, clear so that was something which was quite miraculous i would say and my entire journey in fact has been pretty miraculous um even when i was in hospital during the covid pneumonia the doctors the nurses used to come and tell me that you have such positive vibes um i wish that people would coming into the hospital with pneumonia would have these kind of vibes because um they would not end up in white bags and go um so it was a bit of a shock when they told me that but they said like you know there's a lot of positive energy that's exuding from you so um so that was something that um, i experienced during um, during my covid journey and uh, i uh, another thing that happened was i never once even questioned why me why did i have to get this covid pneumonia it just came i took it as an experience i witnessed it i um, reflected upon what must be happening i just took it like as if uh, it was a cleansing experience so it just came it went by otherwise 15 days was a pretty long time for me to be in hospital people were coming and going like in 3 days and 5 days so that was uh, something that it really calmed me down i was not at one point even agitated or anxious so i was totally in control i would say or calm that is how my covid experience was yeah and my um, oxygen levels so like i was on oxygen for 12 days um the doctor said that i might need oxygen at home but um, just before i could come back two days before the uh, on day 13 they took out my they removed the oxygen and i was sailing at 96 and 97 so it was like you know a real comeback so it was a very good experience i would say i tried doing meditation in the hospital but like you know at, uh, like one sort to i cited it but um, the thing is i i was feeling extremely tired but during that time whenever i did meditation i felt like a so a burst of energy a, a sense of well being so that is what i would say was my experience thank you for listening so oh, i'm from i'm from mumbai india by the way all right wonderful you said a few things i never i took it as an experience you gained that courage or you mastered the courage when i take it as an experience that fear is not there then you are doing wonders if you have the faith of the size of a mustard seed you can move mountains from jesus christ thank you vilma madam for sharing covid will come when we are neutral okay so what covid will come so what it's an experience it'll come so what covid will heal when you say i'm healing i'm healing it is with me and then i can heal myself my body is healing the moment we take it as an experience it will come it will come if you just say so what it comes to me we 
when you resist turn and say it is not coming to me, what a resist persists. So many can succeed. <clears throat> many can succeed in that thought too. Meditators will develop immunity that you can come out of it. It is an experience. We all know everybody has to have it, whether it is injection or whether it is directly. If we are aligning to a purpose and if we start thinking about how I am going to live my life, lead my life for the betterment of myself, that itself is sufficient for the betterment of others. If you think about it or not, it's okay. The moment you say for yourself, automatically you're going to help others. So just that very thought will help the COVID the virus is to help us coexist with them and then we coexist with them. They with us. <clears throat> it's all how we think and feel about these events. You'll catch cold. Don't touch that. Oh, today you're sneezing. So what's, what's with you? So let's stay away. Why did you come to office today? We are sneezing and we have this. Oh, you got this viral bug as it is going to give the bug to others. That's the mental, that is the state of mind we have. That somebody sneezes, somebody's got it, then we'll also get it. I used to be there, dear friends, before. That's a big thing that you ask people to stay home just because somebody catches cold. You do, but then how do you explain that many people don't catch that it's very cold if that virus is going to go from one to the other? Then we're going to step back here. Talking about mind powers. <clears throat> Everything is placebo effect. Wilma, Madam, read You Are the Placebo. I'll tell you, that book, when I read in 2015, my meditation depth and then consciousness expansion significantly changed. It significantly expanded. The depth increased significantly after reading that book. One of the best books for the century, I would say. Perfectly combining meditation, case studies, and the sciences to explain, yet it is enough mystical to go through and <clears throat> experience meditation beautifully. And people with health challenges must at least listen in the audio books of that. It empowers, that knowledge empowers that I can direct my body and cells to heal and the work for me. Mind powers work the same way. Pretty much the placebo is working. That's why I am genius minded. I'm unlimited, can help. Mind to matter is documented. Many, many experiments. Our mind becoming coherent and then it's becoming coherent with the universal mind. And so it's gaining so much razor sharpness. A meditative mind can cut, like a laser beam can cut steel. A meditative mind gains that extra power, the concentration to <clears throat> do things pretty, pretty efficiently, quickly. A meditative mind fundamentally remains very highly positive and concentrated. Concentration is a significant thing to be successful. Single point minded we become. With regular meditation, as we empty ourselves, we gain the ability to focus, stay attend to, uh, put our energy on one thing or the two things most of the time during wakeful state. We stay focused, we get less distraction. That, is, that itself is sufficient. When you stay focused, it's like a laser beam. It can, because going straight parallel without interference of two laser beams, so laser beams are more straight, straight beam of rays. Light diffused interfering, and so it cancels out. Laser beams, small energy, but they're straight lines. And so they go very long because when it's not diffused, then it has got the power to go. So meditative mind, when it is concentrated, it's single point 
minded. So they're not thought this way, this way, this way, diffusing, connecting, and then canceling each other energy. It's a single point focus. And that single point focus means our attention is on that thing, whatever that focus is. And so it's got to manifest. And so if it is so on the health, then it helps us to be focused on reprogramming our genes, reprogramming the cells so we can gain perfect health because we are focused on our health. <clears throat> it's what we program ourselves. A mind to matter documents is quite fascinating to hear some of these. A student, the, it's an MIT experiment in the labs. So there is already a saturated liquid, so a chemical experiment. So they're a saturated liquid. So they're putting a special chem special substance, sodium citrate or something. And it is difficult, already a saturated, like you know, if you take a lick a glass of water and put a lot of salt or sugar, then it is gets saturated, right? Beyond a point, you put more salt or sugar, it takes more time to melt, isn't it? Right. If you put a lot of sugar or salt after a point, it takes more time to melt. So, like this, in a saturated substance, now they're trying to put in a saturated liquid, they put it, put this substance. And it is very tricky. Some specific angle this way, that way you do it so that that substance melts. And so students are asked to experiment. And it's tricky, it's tough, very tough apparently to do that because already saturated. And so many of them fail, first attempt, second attempt, third attempt, fourth attempt. But a new student who fresh a freshman came in and then he just did it very quickly. So the supervisor was surprised. I said, okay, so you try it again. He did it again and it happened pretty quickly. And the third time, fourth time, it's fine. He did it. But two weeks later, he got a memo as part of this whole thing in experimentation, hey, this particular experiment, when you're going through chemistry, this is very tricky. So you must be very careful. You got to do this, you got to do that. So when, until the, he got the memo, he was just fine. When he got the memo afterwards, he started not being able to do it very well. He was good. He was performing well, but he didn't have that very conditioned thought that comes from an authority saying that it is a tough experiment. So you got to give enough time. You got to prepare yourself. He was efficient. He was uh, skillful until the time he was conditioned to be otherwise. <clears throat> Teachers were told that this set of students, again, an experiment here in one of these institutes. Teachers were told this set of students are more brighter. They're performing better in exams. In reality, they actually randomly assigned groups of students to, and this, but this randomly assigned, they said this group of students are performing better. They are already into, they're, they're doing good. They're already into their second or third semester into the program quite nicely. So they're doing better. That's all, the teachers have been told that. And guess what? That group of students started performing better in exams. When the teachers are thinking that, oh, these students are performing better, they start performing better, that's it. The student by himself did not have to think about is the environmental influence is there. One can start doing better by just thinking about it. Now, having said that, the placebo effect difference is very, very powerful in increasing everything. But however, structurally also, our brain is changing a bit when we regularly meditate. Of various reasons, and absolutely because the placebo is always working, but the brain is actually changing and so supporting our abilities to do certain mind activities, activities through the mind and the powers of the mind. Let me show you a slide quickly. So meditation is increasing various powers of the mind. <clears throat> uh, 
reading, learning, memory, concentration, power of thought, which is energy, creativity. Meditation is increasing several powers of the mind. And one of the reasons is this whole brain synchronization. Two halves in the brain hemisphere, left brain, right brain. And meditation seems to be their neural capacity. Basically, fundamental what's happening is in the mind is that the neural networks, there are several neurons which are all connecting each other. So every neuron that connects with other is memory. If that neuron connection is stronger, it is long-term memory. And so these neurons are connecting various parts of the brains. So now at a large scale, the brain is divided into two, left hemisphere, right hemisphere, two halves. And these two are independent parts. They have the capabilities of all the motor or any capability that we do, they have equally there. Reading is their left side, right side. Mm. Uh, a learning language is their left side, right side. Creativity is their left side, right side. Everything is there. It is redundantly defined, like two hands. A body is so intelligent. A redundancy that we so beautifully talk about in our systems and products when you're building critical system that you got to have redundancy, right? It's called fault tolerancy and redundancy. Many things are there. So that, you know, they're always available. So our body is designed to be always available. Two lungs, two eyes, two hands, two legs. In the brain is two, most important aspect. There's two parts. If one does not work for any reason, at least you've got this one other one going so you can still continue the life. Now, these two brains, if the neural networks are proper, then they're interconnected through these neural connections. And meditative brain, they, when there's less and less meditation, more and more stress, the neural networks grow naturally when there is no stress. Basically, when there is supply of oxygen or the adequate blood supply is going. And so the neural networks are then growing nicely in the brain. And the neural networks are the foundation for the brain to work well. Neural networks. And meditative mind, they've done research that the gray matter, it's called the gray matter of these neurons that is thickening and thickening and thickening for long-term meditators. And when the neural connections grow, then it is doing wonders in many areas. And one of that is this whole brain synchronization. That means your left brain, right brain come together and work perfectly. It's like you got two hands, but there's no way if you are slowly, if they have become very rigid, each one can work and say, let's say you can't have, you don't have the ability to bring them together then they can't exchange one with the other. You know, I'm holding something heavy. After five minutes, so heavy that I want to just switch hands and then give it here, hold it here, right? Now you think of that way. There is a communication. There is exchange of, you know, activities between these two hands. Then you know that when something more heavier, one hand cannot lift, two to come together. When this one is getting tired, you pass it on to this side. And your mom is giving you something and then you got to carry something else. On the other hand, you're using both. Things like that, right? So, so now we have two brains, exactly the same thing. I'm one side listening to me. Another side, let's say suddenly a big sound comes. Somebody has to listen to the sound. So the other brain takes over and then starts listening to the sound, processing it parallelly. What's happening while you're listening to me and through another brain. So it's like that. These two brains, if they're synchronized, connected, synchronized very well, then we have a lot more capability. We become very efficient because then suddenly you have all the faculties. How is it if you close your eyes, one eye, and then watch sight, the level of sight you see, and then you open the two eyes and see the level of sight you see, the difference you will know it. It is like that, dear friends. That is the kind of difference you're talking. When these brains are independently working, watch us work together. So that's one a stronger reason of, uh, and so for meditative mind, now what is separating these two? I said that neural networks are connecting, it's called corpus callosum. That seems to be strengthening. And so these two are connected nicely for long-term meditators. This is, and the second thing is, second thing is at a large level, our subconscious mind has these things called 
hippocampus and amygdala, this green circle, there are two small dots here. It doesn't matter what they are, right? But this is a subconscious mind, the seat of the soul, the subconscious mind. It also includes this pineal gland, right? The picture is not showing that. Now, the subconscious mind has this amygdala, this emotional center, shrinking fear, and then other side, hippocampus, long-term memory, growing hippocampus. So growing hippocampus, shrinking amygdala, and, and so this subconscious mind, especially the long-term memory is increasing because again, the various neural circuits are increasing, but specifically these areas So as a result. Meditator's mind is uh, over a period of time, increasing all these powers, storing access, concentration, reading, learning, creativity, thought power. Six to eight times we lose concentration per minute. So children benefit greatly when they meditate. And it is many of them said also that I'm able to concentrate now better. I'm able to get better. Naturally, they'll have to perform better academics if they concentrate better. Concentration is a way to go into the flow. Into the flow means that we lose ourselves. We go into the present moment. And so we start merging into the emptiness once again. And so we start drawing, we become efficient. So concentration, you'll understand that more as we go further, study this aspect. Speed reading, my reading powers increase. Reading a word by word versus reading the whole paragraph or page. You will increase your reading capability. Are those who say, I'm not reading will slowly meditation, how is it? happening is because the neural networks when they form see learning is rewiring the neural connections when you want to learn something the neural connections have to rewire to hold it and support it when the it's called neuro rigidity when the neurons are not connecting they're, they're very rigid because it's not not adequate supply of the glue or that oxygen for it to form new connections as extra create new glue so there's no less glues it can't rewire and can't rewire, it does not prevent you from learning. There won't be interest. That center, which is a response for reading or learning, is not letting you uh, uh, show interest because it just doesn't have the adequate capability to rewire. When it can't rewire, it can't take in what you learn. When you can't take in what you read, you don't feel that interest and then you just you know, give up in reading books. So meditation is slowly helping us increase our reading power. Learning is synthesizing, ability to put, take neuroscience, take quantum physics, take your personal experience, take somebody's experience, put it all together and say, yeah, this must be the reason why it's working, right? It is synthesizing information from my various sources is the biggest uh, success factor for people. If you have, we call it aptitude. So ability to grasp things quickly and then synthesize them together. Learning power increases. We become new, we start, we, we break the fixed routines, fixed habits. So creativity is doing things differently. So we break the routine. We start doing things differently, creative. We become more creative because anything we do new, we gain new experience. It supports. So dear friends, meditative mind is able to gain all these powers and memory is for sure, storing and acts are the memory commonly referred and so it helps being better with sharp, sharper mind, sharper brain is uh, definitely helping. So reasons are hippocampus. Hippocampus growing is storing an access for long-term memory, right? That's also called limbic brain. So then your memory power increased because of hippocampus and increased concentration, reading, learning because of this cerebral cortex the cerebral cortex is, the cerebral cortex is essentially this frontal brain, the conscious brain, frontal brain. So as it increases thickening cortex, then you have these capabilities. Creativity and thought power, because as you have now new neural pathways, your creativity is increased because you know fixed mind to the growth mind, neuro rigidity to neuroplasticity. You go in and add as a result, then you become more creative. Thought power is primarily because you have that energy applying with concentration to the single point minded. 90% redundant thoughts have gone away. So all that energy is there. 
right? And then you are receiving energy through meditation. So now all of it is applied. And so thought power means power of thought, what you think has to become. So next week, it's a nice segue to understand what you think that becomes in the manifestation aspect of it, what you call manifestation science. And so thought power is increased for meditators. So that's why many times they say, hey, whatever I think is happening to me. And that's because the power of thought increases. Right, friends. So meditation fundamentally is helping increase our mind faculties. And so one of the core reasons why we become productive at work, efficient at work. Thank you very much for your time. We are coming to the conclusion of the health week. Tomorrow is business leader session. So we'll hear from some other business leaders, how the meditation is helping them. Some might have started now, some are there for a long time. Always, it's good to understand through various people. Do you have any announcements, uh, Pradeep, today? Before we conclude? Uh, not for today, sir. All right. Thank you all. So we'll meet again tomorrow at 6 a.m. And anybody has questions? Shortly in two minutes, break will do questions. Every cell is alive with love. I relax into the healing process. I allow spirit to do what it does. Joy fills every cell in my body. Every cell is alive with love. I relax into the healing process. I allow spirit to do what it does. Joy fills every cell in my body. Every cell is alive with love. I relax into the healing process. I allow spirit to do what it does. Peace. Peace fills every cell in my body. Every cell is alive with love. I relax into the healing process. I allow spirit to do Yes. We have Raj. Before that, uh, what book are we reading uh, today, Pradeep, in the book clubs? Today we are reading You Are the Placebo. It's okay. Morning, morning 8 15 a.m. IST. Uh, Rakesh is going to take the session. Evening, Namita Ma'am is going to do. That's great. Yes, Raj. Hello. Uh, am I audible? Yes. Hello, namaste. Very good morning once again. A uh, little bit of the experience and followed with the question. First of all, uh, uh, thank you very much and congratulations to, to you and your team for a wonderful service work anniversary, uh, which is, uh, I feel it's a great service coming from you and your team. And then uh, followed with a nice article from Karthikan sir. I think I, I have gone through a few pages. It looks like a paradigm shift uh, in the uh, the way we perceive the medicines. Uh, that looks to be a great uh, pages to read. Uh, maybe a quality time is required to go each sentences. Thank you very much for sharing those contents too. Uh, experience wise, yes, I'm a first time meditator. Uh, started on 16th of August. A wonderful experience as of now. Uh, Few content are basically the situational behavior has changed because time to time a lot of things are being faced, but our behavior is more of a response rather, rather than the react. That is what is uh, have seen a little bit of improvement there. Long way to go because uh, brain is more of and more than a CPU nowadays. It's bigger CPU or, or a supercomputer whatever you call it as, but uh, I see those kind of things are happening and more often value, ethics, uh, those things have been highlighted more than need or agreed. So situational behavior is a little bit changed. 
A question is uh, uh, this emptiness. Uh, basically, what is emptiness? Is this emptiness is dark, bright, circle, light? Because this emptiness definition is changing uh, with experience, maybe. Because when we close our eyes and then merge or breathe and then go to that emptiness, uh, sometimes this emptiness is not constant. It could be a circle, it could be stars, it could be anything, but this is something different. It's not an usual thought. Is this difference, is an emptiness? Or, or I'm not able to understand where do we need to stay with emptiness? Is it is it dark? Is it circle? Is it whatever it is, you know, a different thing than the thought is an emptiness where we need to stick? Maybe a little experience says, uh, I may be wrong here because you are mastered on all these things. Stay with that, whatever it is. That's what I'm feeling, uh, but not sure. Sometime it may be light, sometime it may be circle, sometime it's nothing. Uh, it's tough to define this emptiness, but this is a huge energy, which I am experiencing. Question is uh, about emptiness. One need to stay with emptiness. What is this? Okay. I love your question because you have all the answer in it. How many people feel that way? So give him a big pat, uh, give him a big clap for him. Everything you said is emptiness. Everything is all that. Okay. You also said, whatever that is, I just want to stay with it. That is exactly what you want to do. Because we can't contain it. I don't know if I can put words to it and then say, this is what emptiness is, because that is that unknown infinite. Now it can show up in many ways, based on our condition, brains based on the culture from where we grew up based on the environment with which you've been told so empty is dark empty is black empty is gray empty is the sky empty is that black hole picture that we had done some views circles many things exactly what you said uh, raj okay i wish we will make you say this is what i'm explaining the emptiness and then it will go so everything you said is good so all that is a, a little bit of uh, a thought process. This, this is what you know. Uh, I'm feeling, maybe right, but is it like the emptiness is a fresh than what we are not visualized at all? The mark of emptiness is that there are no places people think in it. So if you, right now, if I asked you to close your eyes, and you do that, right? Close your eyes. Everybody can try that. Close your eyes. And I say, become aware of what's there on your left side. And I'm asking you to become aware. Put your attention onto the left side of your body. What do you find? Do you sense? I mean, you don't sense here because you're not touching. But are you becoming aware? Are you experiencing there is some wall there? If you do have a wall, are you a furniture? So your awareness is now observing that, okay, there is furniture, there is wall. Put your awareness on the right side, they gain that. Now in an empty state of mind, you would not observe there is wall is there, the furniture is there, the person is there. When you're empty, that seems to go further because there's no such thing there. It seems to go further and further without any objects or the people, places, things like beings. So an emptiness is marked by it. The color doesn't matter. The state doesn't matter. But emptiness is no people, places, things, including your body. So when people say, I completely lost sense of my body, then they're truly gone into that state of emptiness. Okay. Totally understood. Thank you very much. Yes. We have Raja next. Can you unmute yourself? Uh, namaste, sir. Namaste, yeah. Uh, first of all, uh, I would like to thank uh, Buddha CEO team for giving me this opportunity. It's the first time I'm attending the uh, Zoom sessions on the meditation. Prior to this, I was I have been meditating for myself from this year, June onwards. 
and i would i'm glad to uh, associate myself with you sir uh, you are uh, supposed to be my super senior from the same university with pilani i'm so glad to share with you and uh, i just have uh, i want to share my experience uh, from starting from day 3 onwards uh, i have been experiencing little bit transformations day by day not completely i should say i uh, started thinking positively prior to that i was thinking oh why why am i the target like why only i am feeling this why is this supposed to happen to me alone but now i am feeling like maybe there is some another chance maybe there is some good positive thing is going to happen to me so that's the kind of transformation i am seeing for myself uh, after i started meditating and i do have few questions like uh, um in uh, in one of the sessions you mentioned about the garlic but you didn't give the reasons why you shouldn't why you shouldn't use it or avoid it when you are uh, taking your food so i just wanted to know the uh, medical impacts or uh, scientifically proven facts uh, like why we should avoid garlic and i have been uh, chatting with sheetal ma'am and she was like uh, explaining me that it would avoid any negative vibrations Uh, it's best to avoid if you can so i have that question sir okay i don't have a scientific uh, fact for it neither have a research it there may be something on garlic but garlic induces thamo and rajas qualities lethargy and rajas is illusionary attachments mm -hmm. and in meditation we are overcoming those so it is um, a refinement of the food will happen three steps forward you do with lots of meditation you're trying to overcome those and another side of food habit sort of pull you back a bit so as initially it may not matter that 80 90% is quick with meditation a lot of us get there afterwards refinement has to happen everything matters every word matters in conserving and then going forwards because everything is canceling and so it's an energy sign so you will start paying attention to this very closely okay and uh, so garlic is from that perspective thamo and rajas qualities are further enhanced increased and uh, i found differences for myself as we do it but scientifically you got to go back and study if uh, it has this extra effects okay but but definitely if um, you know this masala paste which is basically a lot of onion a lot of those herbs and uh, lots of tomato and everything is you know the made the paste which like becomes very thick in and lots of garlic is used too i think garlic and ginger and all of this is used so they but number one change the taste of the food you're not eating vegetable as vegetable you're not that neither you're consuming it and then two that food is um, food is there for enjoying for taste buds so that food but you have to eat in moderation in moderation so eating onion some of these are okay but we don't excessively do it and then elimination wise um, i've chose to do patri they told this long ago and ever since i implemented it i found differences i find myself i am this it feels good to me that's all okay and uh, one other thing sir like uh, will we be having more uh, 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 sessions with patriji sir like last week we had on tuesday right enlightenment every, session every tuesday every tuesday oh that's great every yeah. tuesday will be there yes and we also and, to bring we are also looking to invite him on one, one uh, other days when he has if you able to find time he will be there in addition to that too yes okay yeah thank you so much and uh, one last question i have uh, one of my friends suggested me to sit uh, without any back support if i am able to when i am doing meditation and possibly on the floor uh, but 
initially i was able to say it but uh, on the left side of my uh, uh, left joint of my uh, leg uh, it started paining for me i mean i'm not able to bear the pain for so, quite some time so i'm i'm starting to move here and there like little bit adjustments when i'm sitting and doing meditation so is it necessary that you have to sit without any support or or uh, do not necessary without any support it's not necessary okay. at all okay. not necessary at all okay comfort is important okay thank you so much sir yeah wonderful you are in where where are you uh, from i am from bangalore bangalore okay so we must uh, meet bitsa with salamana so we we'll come yes. drop by to ssr office uh, and then meet us definitely sure sir join us for lunch yeah sure Def- definitely thank you for the invitation sir Uh, that's all, sir. No more hands being raised. Okay, Norin, what's happening? Hello, how are you? Um, oh, so, great. Yeah. Oh, great. Well, I've um, uh, because of our time difference, I don't get the chance and the opportunity to take the meditation. So when I do um, today. i had the opportunity and i was just i was just wanting to see everybody's faces so i just have a lot of pleasure in seeing familiar faces and yeah i'm happy all good what's meditation doing to your practice uh i have been i'm not actually finding and i'm not looking for an answer specifically but i, I do know one thing that in aspects where my concentration has improved i and i catch my awareness i catch my thoughts drifting away so that i think the awareness of my thoughts drifting away that has improved i could be doing something and the thought has gone elsewhere and i will make a mistake and i'm like okay your thought went you've made a mistake so i may i think that awareness has become a lot better um and i uh, i i miss it when i'm not able to do it when i'm not able to make the time for it i miss that stillness but i don't i have stopped beating myself about it if i can't do it i can't do it i make time some other time i i forgive myself more easily okay yeah introduce yourself many are new oh um very few So yes, my name is Noreen. I've probably started meditating last June, last June or July when it started, and I got introduced to the, all these wonderful people, um, uh, Patricia uh, Chandra Sir, when I attended Bangalore Ashram, and um, just loved being there uh, at the center. And when uh, Buddha CEO started this last year. i took uh, the first 40 day and then i of course introduced my mom who's on the show who's on the zoom call today as well and in fact um, i think and i've said this in the past to more than me um more than me i am noticing that my mom is has has really taken to this and um, she has benefited so it gives me immense joy that as much as i might not be able to do it um she has been a regular meditator um i don't know she must have done three or four forty day sessions and um yeah just knowing that through me she has been able to connect gives me immense joy so we have passed on but who's able to come and join have joined um um yeah so um i'm just very happy to be part of this organization and thank you to everybody shridhar sir nice to see you pradeep nice to see you um yeah. mom is uh, i'm asking her to unmute i guess she is not yes. able to herself i think my my mother tends to stay quiet she uh, i i will not speak for her but if she not chooses to, want, to, to meditate mother wants daughter to meditate what to do sorry 
Say that again. Daughter is daughter gave it to mother. Mother wants daughter to meditate. Yes, she does. She the other one to benefit. Yes. Yes. Yes, she does. Yeah. So it's a great gift you can give by regularly meditating and joining with her. Of course, I yes. understand you are you are four hours ahead or uh, ahead behind ahead. I know I am ahead. So on the days when I get the chance, when we're in Melbourne and um, we're in lockdown again, so uh, when I get the opportunity, I'm able to meditate and it's nice to connect with people who i would not get a chance to so yes wonderful good to see you yes good to see all of you you thank you, you. there is sheetal sheetal hello sir yes our awareness programs joining from monday is a good time for norin to join Yes, sir. Uh, it will be uh, great to have Norin in the sessions. Talk about it a little bit. Yes, we are going to start the awareness program from Monday. Um, India time is 5.30 p.m. IST and uh, U.S. time is 8 a.m. EST. So this is a 50-minute session. So we will be sharing many beautiful concepts about uh, mindfulness around mindfulness topic, like how our work should be, how our thoughts should be, um, like actions and uh, our planning or what not, right? So there are many cool stuff we are going to uh, talk, about, uh, uh, talk about in the session. So along with the beautiful music meditation, Chandra sir and Lawrence from France is going to uh, take the sessions uh, with me also. So, yeah, I'm looking forward to seeing everyone there and to have this uh, knowledge, which is really, uh, which is really useful in day-to-day -day activity because we are practicing meditation and it is very important to uh, know how aware we should be with ourselves. And these concepts are going to help us in our day-to-day -day life, whether it is in family or in office or uh, in your corporates or business uh, places, wherever it is. So definitely this um, concepts are going to help because uh, that's how I developed myself with all these concepts and practice of meditation. And uh, I am looking forward to seeing you all there, uh, meditating with you all. Uh, that's all, sir. So that's all I wanted to say. Thank you. Yes. Yes. I definitely want to do mindful meetings. They will have various uh, parts, mindful meetings mindful reviews it's going to be corporate centric office focused is what we're trying to do so we'll, we'll, we'll i'm sure we can put some material together and talk about with our experiences on this it will be a shorter session 45 to 50 minute session in the evening with short meditation quick short lecture right lawrence will do many of them okay and shita yes Let's take uh, a little one there. I see. Yes, Asmiji. Sir, how do we register for the Monday session? See, you spoke about this. I was trying to get you to speak along with the daughter. <laughs> <laughs> no, I wanted her to share her experience. I wanted her to share. Yes. yes. We can, can we see you? I want to see both of you on the um, screen. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I was actually online with my granddaughter. She's in the US. So when you were talking to Noreen, uh, I was talking to her <laughs> because she kept calling me again and again while I was doing the meditation. So <laughs> I actually showed the screen to my son that we are on meditation with Chandra sir and a couple of other uh, known personalities. So thank you so much. Wonderful. So good to see both of you. Yes, sir. Yes. Yeah, I have to be mm -hmm. online every day in the morning. Yeah, Looking I don't think I've I don't think I've ever seen my mother at the same time. So <laughs> it's really nice. This is what technology does. Thank you, guys. Yes. Wonderful. Thank you, Asmeji. I know that you've been. At least I get to know that you've been telling so many people, introducing this to many, many people. 
Yes, wonderful. sir. Wonderful. Sir, I have introduced it to my students also, and I'm going to soon share uh, their uh, video and feedback. They just do five minutes meditation before I start my session with them for the English language. And uh, they have given me such a good feedback. So I want to share it with you very soon. Yeah. Nice. Very nice. Excellent. Thank you. Yes, so that's to... program. that program is uh, called Mindful. You can register. Buddhasiva.org slash mindful, I think. Yeah. But we'll also publish the link for people who join in Crystal so they don't have to. So okay. the link will be published. Yeah. Monday. Thank you, sir. Thank you so much. Yeah. Yes. So what's going on here? Three of you. Thank you, Ashmi. Thank you, Ashmi. Thank you, Noreen. Ramesh, you have to, the same struggle I had yesterday. You have to simplify your background. Remove the virtual background, yes. I can't seem to hear you. Is anybody able to hear him? No, can't hear. Yes, can you hear me, sir? No? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Hello, everyone. My name is Parmita. I'm from St. Louis, Missouri, USA. Um, I've been doing meditation for almost one year on and off. One experience is I've become a little bit more mindful and I got a little bit better at drawing. Um, last week, my sister asked a very good question and she's a little bit shy to say it, so I'm saying asking it for her. She asked, um, we sofas, office chairs, and many other chairs are made out of leather, but leather comes from and is animal skin. So can we still sit on it or something? She asked. Wow. 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 Your name, your sister's name. I want you to speak. Arita. Huh? Arita, okay, wonderful question. See, you're up thinking. If animals have to be saved, then can we use leather? No. So I made my decision to not buy leather jackets and leather everything, avoiding leather completely. There are certain things that I cannot avoid, like a purse or uh, maybe like a belt. Most of the time, I also avoid unnecessarily buying, right? But definitely no leather jackets, no fur, no any of those which are coming from animals. If you find a dead animal and take it, no problem. The question is, can you? So the old sages, that is, they never kill a an, uh, an, an living animal and then peel the skin of a tiger and then use it. Instead, it is all from dead. But the thing is, you don't find that. So you're thinking right. Yes, Ramesh, what are you saying? I don't have answer, so I thought, OK. Uh, yeah, beautiful. Yeah, silk saris. <laughs> silk saris. Many meditators are giving up silk saris because pattu, it comes from pattu. Thousands and thousands of pattu insects die. They just boil them in hot water. And how silk is made. Who is giving the right to kill so many things? So. Uh, uh, many meditated women are, as they get to know about them, you stop taking silk. Sorry, if somebody is in silk business, but you better do some other better business. Right? Okay, so leather is a great thing. So, yes, I suggest don't go near, uh, get attracted to these leather jackets. Not at all, not necessary. And so leather chairs avoid fabric chairs as much. So definitely... Like, you know, we buy cars, so we don't buy leather seating at all. Avoid anything that has leather seats. We don't do it. 
Okay. We're conscious about the addition of what seats uh, they're using in the cars, but it's not necessary. Neither at homes. Yes. Good. Thank you for bringing it up. up. See you all day, friends. So thanks, Amesh. Your beautiful daughters. This is what happens. Children start questioning with that new understanding, everything we're doing, and then keep applying it. Okay. Have a wonderful day, dear friends. So we'll meet back tomorrow. Has happened, I think now we both know the way that the story ends. Then only for a minute, I want to change my mind. Cause this just don't feel right to me. I want to raise your spirits. I want to see you smile. But no, that means I'll have to leave. Someone else while it's eating me up inside But we ran our course We pretended we're okay Now if we jump together At least we can swim far away from the wreck we made Then only for a minute I want to change my mind Cause this just don't feel right to me I want to raise your spirits I want to see you smile no, that means I'll have to leave No, that means I'll have to leave Lately, I've been, I've been thinking I want you to be happier I want you to be happier So